people a lot is really going on in the political zone <laughs> another video of Bola Ahmed you know, who is finally out again <laughs> Bona Boy the Afrobeat singer finally come out you know Bona Boy is one of the best Afrobeat singers as far as Nigeria and Africa is concerned he's a Grammy award winner this guy have finally come out you know he have never seen anything regarding Nigeria politics before but this guy come out to shake table he's focalized regarding what Bola Ahmed Tinubu is doing he open up a lot of things so that I would like guys to stay connected to the end of this video Bona Boy and Cheon Okimbaloye of Chinese Television have finally come out to scatter table and shake things regarding Bola and Metinubu. Stay connected to the end. You can share this video and show you share it. Let it go viral. Share it to different social media platforms. And if you can share it, like it, give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us. This scatter Bola and Metinubu. Tinubu is in total panic at the moment. Stay connected. I'm going to show you the video. I'm coming back again. Welcome you back to Lajibong Wash TV. I don't have violence for you today. What is happening in the Christian world? Join now to make sense with like God. Hello my great and wonderful viewers, welcome back to Lodgebug Watch TV. For those of you coming across this channel for the very first time, ensure you click the red subscription button appearing on your video screen and don't forget click the notification bell icon alongside so that whenever we drop a new update regarding what is happening in the political zone, YouTube will easily notify you, you know, we'll be giving you back to back updates on this channel since when they connected the election on the 25th of February. Regarding what happened in the course of the election, I'm still giving you the update regarding what is still happening as far as Nigerian politics is concerned. It's no more the news that OB is doing everything possible to retrieve back his mandate in the tribunal and likewise Bola Ahmed Tinubu is doing everything possible to remain on the presidential seat of Nigeria. He have been doing all sort of manipulative stuffs just to ensure that he retain the seat that he is sitting down at the moment. You know, it's no more the news that Tinubu is not the legitimate president of Nigeria because a lot of things happened in the course of the election. On the 25th of February, there were voters intimidation, voters oppression, voters bullying, talks coming out in different police units, bullying people telling them to vote for APC if you are not voting for APC go back to your house and all of that and they were underage voting and yet Aine Shaman, Mamo Yakubu and Nas Tinobu as the president elect that is where the trouble started from and that is what makes Tinobu to be illegitimate as far as Nigeria is concerned he's sitting down on the presidential seat with half a buttock he's not seated fully every trouble of the political zone that is happening in Nigeria at the moment Ainek Shaman orchestrated everything, but that's not where we're going to. Where we are going to today is the fact that Bona Boy, the Afrobeat singer, have finally come out on Bola Ahmed Tinubu. You know, it was some days ago that Davido came out and unveiled some stuff regarding Bola Ahmed Tinubu. That happened some days ago, but now Bona Boy have finally come out. This guy shaked her license. He said a lot of things regarding Bola Ahmed Tinubu. You know, it's no more the news that Tinubu is trying to face Nigeria Republic Cup now. Tinubu is trying to face the Nigerian Republic Coup alongside with ECOWAS. They are collaborating together, so they want to wage war against Nigeria. But the questions that Nigerians have been asking Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the fact that what concerns Nigeria with Niger Coups? Coups took over Niger and they arrested the president of Niger and some other big politicians and all of that and they put them in custody and the military groups begin to rule Niger and they form their own government and all of that. But what is the headache of Bola Ahmed Tinubu? That is the questions that Nigerians are asking Tinubu now. They said, what is the benefit of Nigeria if Tinubu sends soldiers to Niger to go and fight against the militaries that took over Niger? What is the gain of Nigeria? Because Nigeria are going to use their military resources and they are going to use a lot of their financial resources to wage the war alongside with other ECOWAS countries against Niger. And Nigeria is going to lose a lot of resources and this same Nigeria is suffering from poverty. Poverty in Nigeria is very high. The poverty rate in Nigeria is very high. People cannot afford to risk square men and all of that. And yet, the president of Nigeria is saying that he wants to go and wage war 
against a country and is using Nigerian resources and at the end of the day, Nigeria will not gain anything and this same Nigeria is in total debt of trillions of Naira but yet Tinobu did not consider all these things or is fighting for his own personal interest. But Bonaboy have finally come out to shake table so that you can share this video and show it shared because I'm going to be showing you the video of where Bonaboy said everything and where she or Kimbalo here of Chinese television made out a lot of points regarding what Tinobu is doing. She or Kimbalo here revealed a lot of secrets regarding what Tinobu is doing at the moment. So she and Bonner boy said it all in this very video. So I like guys to stay connected. I'm going to be showing you where Sheon said a lot of things regarding Bola Metinobu first. Then coming in again is the video of Bonner boy. So be then stay connected. I'm coming back again. <laughs> The military did not just take over for no reason. Yes. And almost all the coup in Nigeria from 1966 uh, further no, in down Africa. Or in Africa. But yeah. I mean, we domesticate the matter now to look at the reasons why there is a military takeover. Burkina Faso has had one of the highest military uh, coups and one of the most successful we've seen in Chad, we've seen in some other part of uh, Africa. And this has been on the rise. One of the things that you highlighted in your article is the fact that corruption, mismanagement of resources, and you will hear the military junta in, uh, in Nigeria saying that, um, and in fact in Burkina Faso say, they have a lot of resources that the colonialists have used against their own country, but now they need to start thinking internally. Corruption, mismanagement of wealth, and the uh, high-handedness of political class. That is one of the, uh, those are the reasons why these military guys are coming on board. Is that a warning to our political class? This is, this is the issue I mentioned, the African Charter 2014, uh, uh, that is the issue of African uh, gov uh, governance architecture, which has to do with the issue of local governance, domesticating the local governance here. We've been fighting on the issue of local government autonomy, where people can be close to the government. We've been fighting, we've been battling. There were serious, uh, as a series of amendments of our constitution so that this tier of government can have total freedom. They can have uh, their, their, their money coming to them directly, their funds. So if you look at it, the issue of corruption is there. The issue of transparency in governance, you must have those elements, those thematic areas to address them. That is that. Then issue of communication. Today, if you look at the sentiment going on, mostly in the northern part of the country, People does not know that the president is acting as the chairman of the ECOWAS, not as a single individual. It was an ECOWAS decision who he happens to be the president. So you need to communicate to tell the people this is the engagement by ECOWAS. Then what Nigeria is doing is to go and explain to people. But we concentrated in speaking in English language to be telling people every day what we are doing. Where the bulk of the people does not understand this language we are speaking. The, the dynamics to this or the, uh, or the intrigue in this is that as much as the rest of the world uh, is uh, speaking against the Kupist and uh, the, uh, the junta in Niger, it does look like there is a popular uh, support for the military junta on the ground in Yame and the street on most of the days they are supporting uh, the, the copies. But you look at it, the psychological warfare too works to some extent because now it's a transition committee to that uh, transition cabinet. The junta is trying to say, no, we are not here to sit. We are here to hand over power to civilian. Now this is where the bilateral engagement will be involved. Yesterday, we have seen the, 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 the Khalifa, uh, Senussi Lamida Senussi, he was there. We need to have more of this engagement. Let me uh, tell you, most of these military uh, officers in, uh, uh, of Niger, they attend their staff and command college uh, courses in Nigeria. So that means there are a lot of instructors that know these people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if you go to the multil uh, multilateral joint force where Nigeria is leading, you have some people that are together with this Nigerian military guys. Then we have to now engage more in diplomacy to try to see how we are going to solve the problem. If you have, 
Let me tell you one good thing. The Boko Haram, they have not settled in Niger. They did not allow them to settle there, to abort them. The same thing with the bandits. What of if we engage into that and we are facing an internal security issue here? And you should know, Niger is our buffer, uh, buffer with uh, Libya, where you have a lot of weapons coming from that angle. If you Google and see the small weapons in Africa going around in West Africa, there are 70% found them is uh, something in Nigeria. From where? Mostly from Libya. So we have to be careful in handling this issue. No. It's like, like America. If you go to USA, USA will not job with Mexico or Cuba. You have to look at their national interest, national security interest, before is, they look at regional isn't, interest. Is, isn't it, so the uh, same thing isn't that we it, uh, um, a regional issue that has caused a problem with Russia and Ukraine? Exactly. Now, the, the, the question now here is, there is now um, an announcement uh, by the ECOWAS that the, the ECOWAS standby force should be on guard and should be standing by. What does that mean? Isn't that a military or use of force that is being considered imminently? Definitely, there must be a psychological warfare. ECOWAS will not just sit down and say, oh, we are not taking any action. What is the standby the, the, the force? Chairman, what is, can yeah. you explain to Nigerians it, what the standby force means? Definitely, they have to look at it. Where is it escalating to? You have four countries now in, in the ECOWAS region with military uh, heads. And if care is not taken, they will, it will explode or escalate to another country. So ECOWAS force must be on stand by and it's a psychological affair to the coupies in Niger and other places that are maybe there is an intention to do that and you should know right now in the Francophone countries if you look at it there is a serious rebellion against the French interest so we have to look at that that's why I keep on em emphasizing that we have to look at the Nigerian national security interest first before the regional interest so it means prof that with the announcement and all the pronouncement of ECOWAS today, that the ECOWAS standby force should be prepared to restore order and democratic governance in Niger. It means that boots on the ground, military boots, including soldiers from Nigeria, might be moving into Niger. Is that the case? No, I, I think from the president's speech, which we have watched here, that they are looking at all options. And that option, actually, the military option will be the last resort. And I don't think we are going to go into that military options. If it gets to that, what yes. is the implication? The, the implication, actually, you know, when you start a war, you don't know what will happen again. And uh, we said it, these very uh, fragile uh, borderlines, border lines, there is going to be serious distance. And it might even get to the southwest because you have the Benin Republic too, by the other side of the, uh, of the Niger. So there is a lot of things they are involved and we have to think more than one million times in a second. We have to think seriously. We are, to, to, we are already bombarded internally with our struggles and to, our hold, military are over to hold our territory. Yeah. Uh, not even in terms of military now, in terms of civil uh, uh, security uh, 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 hold on our territory. Now the threat on our external, the external integrity of our nation is going to be called to question with us. On a final note, Prof, give us an understanding of if you were in President Tunubu's shoes, uh, a new president who is trying to find his feet on the ground, now is faced to be the, uh, with, with this kind of situation in Niger, now leading ECOWAS with the fact that they want to warn uh, any possible military tendencies. If you, if you look at it, since 2021, Prof, mm. there have been very high level, high number of coup cool attempts in the region. Yes. Uh, Chad, Mali, Guinea, Sudan, Niger. In 2022 alone, there were five attempts, but only two in Burkina Faso succeeded. Yes. If you look at since 1952, Nigeria had eight uh, coup attempts, eight in Niger, eight in Benin Republic, eight in Mali, 10 in Ghana, 10 in Sierra Leone, 10, 9 in Guinea, uh, Guinea Bissau, 10 in Burkina Faso, 17 in Sudan, 11 in Burundi, 9 in Cosmoros. The, the Comoros. The problem here is if you were in President Bolatinobu's shoes, 
would you focus more on in, internal issues or you'll be more involved in what is happening now? I've got to come to that. Yeah. It's in the shop now. They say now what we want to enter like this. <laughs> Yeah, madman. Who I never do, you won't go fight war. How <laughs> <laughs> you won't reach the place, the battlefield. <laughs> you will use, I think that they use that generator now as a gas generator. And they tell you, <laughs> it shocked me. Well, I know they have a tire now. You won't fire the albums of our total. Five more. <laughs> From my first statement, I look at it, I said that we have to look at national security interests before the regional security interests. Mm -hmm. What is our own interest in Niger and in our other countries? We have to look at that very seriously because it's a buffer. What do you think is more? Then the next thing what do you think is, is consultation. More? The national security interest is more then we have to consult and do contact consultation. There are a lot of experts within the country that are going to advise the president on what to do in this matter. So they have to be engaged, they have to be consulted, they have to be involved. If you look at what the, the, the Sanusulia Mida Sanusi has done, he went there on his own. And I think there should be more engagement, more people to go into that, to right. sing to these copies. What would be the repercussion? And even if you want to do any kind of sanction, you sanction those involved and those that are with the copies, then you now targeted them. Mm. Now those who say if African leaders do not take charge of the cause, uh, that those who are of the school of thought and those uh, who believe that the West sometimes have their own agenda and yes. they decimated some part of the that continent the and we should not allow the West to intervene and the colonial mentality to, t to prevail in this tendency. But how African we leaders are going to deal with this one is left. Libya is a big lesson. Yes. Those of us, we don't want to bother ourselves about the international dimension or uh, the technicalities of all these niger as we know it we have at least three languages that are spoken in niger republic and are spoken also in nigeria niger is one of the largest country on the continent in fact the second largest with over a million square kilometers uh, that we have uh, most of it uh, a de I mean, have in desert and just about 25 million people in that country if there is a war in niger what is nigeria's business uh Sheung, thank you for having me uh, let's do the anatomy of coup in African country. If you look at it from 1960 to almost today, we have almost more than 140 attempted coup and 80 were successful. So you look at what were the reasons and how what happened and why these coupies were somehow succeeding in doing what they are doing. Up to now, we have not come out from the colonial hangover and the military junta hangover to look at our security architecture, to look at how are we going to reposition a democratic government in terms of uh, VIP protections and so on and so forth. If you look at Niger in particular, why you see, you mentioned in your prelude, why you see the most of the northerners we are talking about it. We don't have a defined border. Defined border. Most of the things you see on the map, they are not very kind of uh, feasible. If you get to places, you see how we overlap within ourselves. Some places actually, it looks like Nigeria, but it's Niger. Some places look like Niger, but it is Nigeria. And there are, I understand yes. that there's a lot of intermarriages in the serious with Nigerians, serious Nigerian, and yeah, there are a lot. Even of today, someone read my article, and the response is there, one of the person, he married from Kasina, he married, I think, last week. He's part of the transition committee. He's a Nigerian. You look at the, the relationship. Apart from that, if you have a country, maybe a border with a country that span 100, 1,500 kilometers, that is from Maiduguri to Kebi states, and you have to be very careful on what you are trying to do. And 
first thing that Nigeria ought to do in the first place, we should exhaust our bilateral engagement before the multilateral engagement. You have seen the uh, Khalifa, the uh, uh, Senussi Lami, the Senussi, was in Niger. So that engagement should continue whether other options are being considered. Now, come to another issue. Nigeria would not joke with its own interests. Nigerian interest, is Nigeria's interest? Nigerian interest is their bilateral agreement, bilateral relationship, what is going to happen to Nigeria. If you look at the the, 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 the countries that surrounded Niger, one, there is Mali, there is uh, Chad, and there is uh, uh, Burkina Faso. All these things, you have copies. Even the Malian and uh, the Chadian guy, if you look at the constitution of the country, in the absence of the president, the speaker shall sit. But he was from the army the, that now become the president of the Mali. Definitely, um, Chad Rada. So, definitely, and he was the first person to speak with the copies. Sorry, just for a moment. Look at look at the map there. Yes. All right. So if you see, Nigeria has more than four st states that borders Niger. Exactly. You look at Sokoto, uh, yes. Katsina, Katsina, Kano, Yobe, uh, Yobe, yes, uh, and Gawa, and Digawa, yes. And of course, uh, as a part of uh, Yobe, yes, uh, to yeah, Bruno State. Uh, Bruno State. Yes. So we have. So the, the, I, the implication is that any unrest or violence in that country yes. will spill over into Nigeria. And you should know, most of our IDPs, as a result of Boko Haram, they are in Niger. And you have some as a result of the banditry, they are in Niger. You have the multi-national uh, distinct joint force, that is the multilateral joint force. Our military, they are together with the Niger military in that operation. So, I think Nigeria should always consider the bilateral engagement that is diplomacy if you look at it uh shown the 2000 uh, lome uh, declaration if you now come to 2007 to the aga uh, of 2014 that is uh, african uh, governance architecture only 17 countries sign it and out of the 17 countries only six ratify that very agreement the domestication is just an ink this thing we are giving to it. This military always use this as a yastic mm -hmm. to strike. Suggestion here, even in Nigeria, we have to restructure our VIP protection. How? We need to have more of our DSS, the police, the NIA, within anything villa. The military left Brigade of Guard for us. The, if you look at the, 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 the police, they have ear wing. All what they need is to straighten that institutions. The military actually underdevelop these police. So you police, have, they have 7,000. So, you let me, let me just, so just yeah. a moment, yeah. so that people will get the perspective you are bringing. Yes. So for Nigeria yeah. and our security architecture and the protection of our democratic values yes. and tendencies, we need to rethink our security apparatus that is what you're saying yes so that we can ward off any possible coup is that right yes <laughs> thank you for staying connected my great and wonderful viewers you can hear what here or kimbaloye was saying in this very place what is the interest of nigeria in what is happening in Nigeria? what concerns nigeria because we believe that we have internal crisis in nigeria and yet the number did not say to the internal crisis that is in nigeria but is focused now is Niji. Niji is his topmost priority at the moment. If you look at the video of that Bona boy very well, Bona boy call him a madman. If you look at it, if you listen to the video very well, you can recheck the video again. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you can recheck the video again. Bona boy call him a madman. The voice was silent. And because a lot of Nigerians have been saying this, that Tinobu is really out of his sense because everyone believes that a reasonable person, you will first of all take care of your your internal issues before you take care of external issues you, you first of all attend to yourself first before you attend to third party because Niger is a third party issue it is only a country that is self-sufficient that is very okay that have no internal issue that can attend to another country's issue so the coup that took over Niger is none of nigerians business because the business of nigeria is the first society that is removed and no palliative is being made 
they remove fuel subsidy and a lot of people are suffering, trekking to works. A lot of people can now afford three square men. That is the issues of Nigeria. Poverty rates have increased in Nigeria. Tinubu did not increase minimum wages. He only increased the salaries of the senators, the salary of the politicians, and the salary of the judiciary, the judges, and the lawyers. Those are the people that Tinubu increased their salary and he increased it based on his own personal interest so that he can retain the presidential seat. Tinubu did not increase minimum wages and yet things hike up in Nigeria at the moment. Dollar is now 9.30 today. So a lot of things are very expensive and a lot of common men cannot afford what is in the country. The livelihood of Nigeria now is unaffordable. The cost of living in Nigeria is very high and yet there are a lot of banditry and terrorism. A lot of things are happening in the northern part of Nigeria. Warehouse men and all of that are killing people up and down. Bandits killing people and Boko Haram killing people in different regions in Nigeria. Those are the internal issues of Nigeria. Tinubu did not solve it. Nothing had been done about the killings taking place in different regions. That is why Bonaboy called him a madman. There is no fuel in Nigeria, but yet you are using the fuel to go and fight another person in their own country where they are facing their own issue the issues of your own personal country is yet to be solved so what do you guys think do you really think Tinubu is working for the betterment of the country because according to report now if Tinubu should wage war against Niger he will use Nigerian resources he will feed the soldiers that will go and fight in Niger he will supply all the weapons that the soldiers need to fight Niger and all of that he will be the one to supply everything and he's making use of Nigerian resources he will make use of Nigerian aircraft and all of that and many of the aircraft may be bombed and it may cost Nigeria a lot of money to replace them again. Niger is not giving Nigeria money to replace them. Tinobu will still use Nigeria money to replace all those things that will go for the war and all of that. Poverty rate in Nigeria is very high. After Tinobu is using Nigerian resources to fight Niger, Nigeria will not gain anything because the Niger people said they don't need the help of Tinobu, that they are okay with the coup that took over their country. Country. So we believe that there is a better way of negotiating with the military coups in Niger rather than fighting them with war. War is not a better option. If you look at the issue of Russia and Ukraine to today, Putin thought the war will just linger for like one week or a maximum of one month. But the war is lingering to more than a year now. So the outcome of war is not predictable. So what he never want to lay his hand on now is not predictable because a lot of Nigerians are in Niger doing business the Bonner boy that come out today have a lot of fans in Niger. So will they be able to call him to go and sing in Niger again if there is war between Nigeria and Niger? The answer is capital no. And a lot of people are doing businesses in Niger. A lot of Nigerians are in Niger doing flourishing business and taking care of their own family. But yet, if Tinobu should wage war against Niger, do you think the Niger people will allow them to continue their businesses in Niger? The answer is capital no. This thing is going to cost Nigeria a lot of things. Things, but Tinobu is not seeing all these things. But all he's concerned about is the president of Niger that is in custody. But Shiwa Kimbaloye asked the question in this very video in the interview that I was granted. He said the coup that took over Niger did not just take over Niger for no reason. They took over Niger due to some reasons because they believe that there are maximum corruption in Niger. The president of Niger and the people and the politicians of Niger are in total corruption. They they are draining the economy of the country. They are stealing from the country. That is why the coups took over with the backup of the people of Niger. The coups eradicate them and take over the country. The politicians of Niger are sending uranium and they are not remitting the money to the Niger poor. So they are taking this money personal. They are stealing from the country. That is why the coups took over. That is the question that Shea Okimbaloye was asking the prof that he granted an interview. That is just the whole issue. What do you guys think? I would like you guys to drop your opinion in the comment section of this video. What do you think? Drop your opinion. Feel free. Say your mind. What do you think regarding what Bonaboy said and what do you think regarding what Shea Okimbaloye said in the interview that I just finished watching? As I'm going on there to get another note for you. Make sure you follow me on my social media handles on Facebook at Lightboard Watch TV and Lightboard Entertainment on Instagram at Lightboard. Guess what, guys? See you in my next video. Bye. Pastor where they bar, where where? Politics are where they do pass. Self, leader. Why you waiting for church?
Ha 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 